All right, so welcome back. In the last video, we just got started with some basic data entry, and I showed you a couple tricks for adding extra rows, as well as auto fitting these columns to fit your text. Now comes the fun part. And um, earlier, I think in an earlier screencast, I talked about how using spreadsheets um, allows you to save your brain for creative work. And here's an example of that creative work. And work with me here. Um, what we have to do right now is we have to sort of imagine the future possibilities. In other words, what is it exactly that we want to do with this budget? Okay, and I'm thinking ahead um, and I'm thinking, I'm imagining that I probably want to use this budget to figure out what I can and can't afford. In other words, I want to sort of answer some questions about what the expenses, you know, what sort of how I should limit or my expenses or what sort of income I should shoot for. Because remember, I haven't actually done this yet. This is something I'm planning for. I want to make sure I can afford it. And I want to make sure that I don't go over budget. Um, and so I'm going to want to have some flexibility in this in this particular budget. Okay. And this is really important. It's kind of a subtle but important point to remember is that when you are building, whether it's a budget or any sort of a spreadsheet template, you want to build the most flexible template possible. Okay, spreadsheets are incredibly good at this. They're incredibly good at giving you fantastic flexibility, but only if you think about it beforehand and if you set it up correctly. And what you need in order to be able to do that is you need a little bit of imagination. You just need to think ahead to like, what are the possible ways I might want to use this? And you know, how can I make sure that I build the most flexible tool possible? Now, the good news is, is that this gets easier with time. Okay. The more experience you have doing this, the easier this is going to come to you. And the more you're going to be able to imagine those possibilities. Let me give you an example of what I mean right now. Okay. Now you're thinking, okay, so we've listed all our expenses here. We've listed all of our income. You're probably thinking, all right, time to put some numbers in here, right? Like we're going to start saying tracking days, going to spend X dollars, session musician, I'm going to spend X dollars, blah, blah, blah. And you're going to start listing all of the costs right here in column B. And yes, you could do that. That is totally possible to do that. Okay. But that is going to be somewhat limiting when it comes to us trying to make some you know, some choices later on down the road when we're trying to be, you know, use this, this template in a more flexible manner. And hopefully this will become more obvious as we go on. Okay. What I'm thinking, because I've done this before a few times before, and I know from experience that what's something that's actually really useful to have is to build a little bit more flexibility by adding things like a quantity column and a cost per, and then having, you know, a total column over here. Um, by the way, this is probably something you're very used to seeing. You've probably seen invoices formatted this way, or, you know, maybe you've seen other budgets formatted this way as well. The reason we do it, we do it this way is because this gives us the flexibility later on to change some of these numbers and then have the spreadsheet recalculate things for us automatically. Now, if this is, if this makes perfect sense, fantastic. Okay. You're well on your way to becoming a spreadsheet expert and that's terrific. If you're still a little hazy on this, don't worry. Okay. Just hang on for the ride. Trust me as we move on. And as we see the spreadsheet in action, it's going to start to come together for you. And it's going to start to make a lot of sense. Okay. So uh, because of the type of budget that I am building here, I've decided I'm going to add a quantity column here in, in column B, and I'm going to add a cost per column. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the cost per unit and the unit's going to depend, right? I mean, this is, this is really going to depend on according to the type of budget that you're doing. Um, in this case, this might be, this will be the number of days versus this is, you know, the unit will be songs, you know, I, we'll walk through this in order. So don't worry. Um, so the cost, you know, the unit's going to depend, the quantity is going to be right here. And then we'll worry about the math later. Okay. Let's not worry about the math right now. Um, so let's start filling in some of this information. Okay. Um, the first thing here is I'm going to be doing some tracking days at a recording studio. And let's say I found a recording studio that charges $650 per day. Okay. So I'm going to put the number 650 here because that's the cost per day. And the quantity here would be the number of days that I think I'm going to need in terms of, you know, for, for recording this particular CD. So let's say, cause I want to do a really good job of this. But let's say we decide to take five full days. Okay. To, to record our, our CD, our five song CD. You might think that's actually an awful lot of time. And that's actually kind of industry standard spending, you know, one day uh, per song on average in a recording studio, if you really want to do things really, really well. 
So, uh, but again, don't worry, this isn't a budgeting class. This is just giving you an example. So I've got five days at $650 per day. Um, next, I'm going to hire my theremin player. Let's say I have decided to hire a theremin player. Hmm. Um, I've looked in the theremin player directory and I found a really fantastic theremin player who charges, uh, let's say they charge, you know, uh, let's say they charge $200 per song. Okay. Because, uh, you know, you got to be really, really skilled to be a theremin player. So let's pretend that they, they charge $200 per song. I happen to want them, I want the theremin player to play on three songs. So I'm going to put the quantity three. All right, good stuff. Um, let's talk about our producer. All right, let's say the producer, uh, our producer charges per song. We happen to be doing a five song CD. So I'm going to be putting, quantity will be five right there. And let's say I found a producer who charges $350 per song. Okay. Uh, next, uh, let's talk about a mixing. Okay. We're mixing uh, our mix engineer. Again, our mix engineers, very, very often our mix engineers will charge per song. Okay. Um, and so let's say I found a mix engineer that charges $300 per song. Okay, so I'll go ahead and put that there and the quantity again will be five because we're doing five songs. Um, now I just realized here as I did this, uh-oh, I've forgotten an expense category, okay? And I sort of did this on purpose because I wanted to show you again, I wanted to have a little bit of practice on how we add things back in, okay? And so here's an example of where, again, what are we gonna do? Yeah, we're gonna right click here, we're gonna do insert rows, and I wanna add an extra thing in here, an extra line. In this case, what I need to do is I need to add what's called mastering. This is a mastering process. This is basically preparing your final songs for manufacturing. This is a very important thing. Can't believe I forgot that. Okay, so usually a mastering engineer again will charge per song. So I'm just gonna type that in. And again, because we're charging per song, it's gonna be five songs. A uh, typical cost for a mastering engineer, let's say they're gonna be charging me $120 per song. Okay, graphic designer. All right, so what should we spend? Well, I really wanna make sure that our graphic design is super, super duper awesome. So I'm going to go all out. I'm going to find somebody who hopefully can do it for, um, how much should I, should I budget for that? Oh, let's see if we can find someone who can do it for $500. Okay. I really want it to be super good. Um, I could probably spend way more than that, but you know, I don't want to go too, too crazy. Um, what's my quantity here? Well, in this case, the graphic designer is just doing one job, right? They're doing the one job of preparing all the CD artwork and layout. So I'm just going to put the number one right there. Okay. We're almost there. Next manufacturing. Okay. Well, Let's think about this. How many CDs are we going to get made? Well, let's say I, I'm really, I'm excited about this. I want to get a thousand CDs pressed. So I'll put a thousand units right here. And I happen to find a manufacturing place that will manufacture my CDs at a dollar 40 each. So I'm just going to put a dollar 40 right there. Okay. So one of the things you probably notice right here is that quantities look okay. Those numbers are fine, but these numbers right here, the cost per, when you think about costs, you think about you know, dollars, right? Dollars and cents, that sort of thing. Think about currency and we'd really like this to be formatted correctly. So here's, you know, a second tip when it comes to formatting your data, your information. All right. Um, and there's different ways of doing this. If I right click inside here, there will be, and this, this will be the same in most uh, software applications or most spreadsheet applications. There should be some sort of an option to format cells. Okay. So in this case, if I go to format cells, if I click through on that, that would give me the option to format it using, you know, whatever currency formatting or whatever. But can I show you an even a shortcut to this? Right up here, you happen to notice that there's a button. There's a button uh, that looks like a pile of money. It just makes me laugh that there's this button here with a pile of money. Um, this is the currency number format. If I click on this, it will just automatically reformat that to the correct number. It hasn't actually changed the information in there. It hasn't actually changed the data. The raw data is still the number 650, but now it looks like currency and that's what we're used to seeing, right? It looks like numbers, like, like numbers that are, you know, numbers of dollars. And so that's great. Now, do I have to do that? Do I have to click individually and do that? No, you can actually select the entire column Okay, click this button and it will format everything in here as currency for you automatically. Isn't that great? Okay, what's really neat now is that as I start to, let's say I, I, I put a number in here, it's going to automatically um, format it accordingly too because we selected the entire column. Okay, um, so isn't that cool? All right, I'm just going to delete that for the time being. 
Now, if you don't have that button, okay, that, that number format button, and most, most programs, most spreadsheet applications will have some button that does that. You can also, here's another thing you can do. You can right click. I can click on the actual, the top of the column. I can right click. And again, you're looking for some sort of formatting option. So I could format cells and then I get a little option. And again, this, this box might look different depending on what program you're using. But as long as you are looking to format and you're looking for currency and then there will be some option that you can select there and then you can just go ahead and click OK. Don't get too overwhelmed by all the choices, you know, particularly really big programs like like Microsoft Excel and even to a certain extent LibreOffice will often have a lot of options available and to a beginner it can seem really, really overwhelming. Don't be overwhelmed, okay? It's totally okay, um, but um, just make sure that you know how to change the format for things because that's going to make things a lot simpler for you, okay? All right, let's keep going with this. All right, we want to keep putting this, uh, putting in some information. I'm just going to retype this quantity, cost per, and total. Okay, whoops, spell that right. Let's figure out how we're going to make money. Okay, let's let's make some money here. So. Um, Let's skip the crowdfunding campaign for right now. Let's talk about pre-sales, okay? Well, how many CDs do I think I'm going to sell in advance? Uh, this is where uh, I'm going to estimate that I sell. So I've got a pretty good online following. So I'm going to estimate I'm going to sell about 180 CDs in advance. And I'm going to sell them at, let's see, it's a five-song CD. It's not technically a full CD. It's more what we would call an EP. Um, a pre-sale good price, a good pre-sale price would maybe be $5, okay? That's a really nice low price. We, we really want to encourage people to buy the CD in advance. Okay, next, off the stage sales. Once we actually have the CDs in our hands and we're going to be playing in, in clubs and live venues and we're going to be selling them off the stage, I'd like to offer them also, I would like to offer those CDs at a, at a fairly low price. So let's let's keep the price at $5 for those people because uh, they've, they've bothered to come out to see us at a show. They've probably already paid a cover charge. How many are we going to sell there? Well, this is where I have some high hopes because I know our band, the RoboBunny Attack All Stars, we we have a great live following, we've got a late, great live act. So I'm I'm anticipating we're going to sell. Let's say we're going to sell 400. No, let's say 430. Ooh, not 4,030. 430. Okay, 430 records. There we go. We'll, we'll sell 430 CDs um, at live shows. I feel pretty confident about that. Okay, local retail sales. All right, we should be able to sell a few uh, from local retailers. Again, you know, our local retailers have been really supportive. Let's put 120 there. Now, we're going to probably have to mark up the price a little bit. Let's say $6, and then obviously the retailers will probably mark that up a little bit more too, but that's fine. So let's say $6 here. Mail order, that should probably be marked up a little bit more too. And by mail order, though, I don't expect to do a lot via mail order. Not a lot of mail order CD sales nowadays, but let's put 70 there, okay? Uh, digital downloads, okay, again, we've got that strong online following. A lot of people are buying singles or downloading MP3s online. Um, I feel pretty confident that we'll sell a lot. Let's say 500. No, you know what? Let's say 550. I think that'd be great. And how much is that going to be each? Well, let's just keep it at an even dollar, okay? I know that, you know, iTunes is, you know, 99 cents or whatever, and let's just keep it at a dollar for now. Just keep it nice and simple. And the full CD, let's give people an option if they buy the full CD, let's make it a little bit cheaper for them. Let's make it $4. And by the full CD, I mean it's a digital download, so it's not quite as good as having the full CD package in your hand. Let's make that a $4 download, and let, I anticipate we'll get about, let's say, 260 downloads for the full CD. Boy, oh boy, are you seeing here? I sure am glad I don't have to do this math because I don't know about you, but I would not be able to figure out what, you know, I could probably figure that out. All right, that's 550 bucks, but this... Yeah, no, I can't do that math in my head, nor should you have to. That's the whole point of using a spreadsheet is so we don't have to do the math in our head. Yay! All right, finally, crowdfunding campaign. This is like a big fundraising campaign we're going to do. Let's be bold. I think that we can raise $3,500 via our crowdfunding campaign. What's the quantity here? Well, that's just one. I'm just going to consider that one campaign, and overall, we're going to make $3,500 from this one crowdfunding campaign. Again, remember, it's not a budgeting class. Whether or not these numbers are realistic are sort of beside the point, right? We're just using this as an example for our spreadsheet. Okay, fantastic. 
fantastic. Well, we've put all of this information here, okay? We've put uh, quantities and we've got cost per, and we can edit these later on if we need to, but this is a great start. In the next video, we're gonna start to learn how to put our our actual spreadsheet to work to start doing the math for us so that we don't have to do that math. All right, so I'll catch you in that video.